protector and provider super hey what's up it's presley tenet from the voice and you're watching the michael finkley show on roku and youtube If I can make it through the night Just to see a brighter side Cause I've been working all my life Just to make it If I can make it through the night Hello everybody, welcome to the Michael Finkley Show. Thanks for joining us today. Y'all, I'm rocking a new do. I'm loving this. Look, 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 I'm loving this. Mm, I'm just experimenting with some stuff, but I'm loving this look. I'm loving this look. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm excited about today's guest today because, you know, I love some music. I love interviewing people that are in various genres of music and just hearing their stories and how to grow and how they got started. It's just inspirational. It's very, very inspirational. As you look at my social media, I'm kind of seeing it a little bit more, you know, kind of putting my talent out there a little bit more so I never know where it's going to land. You never know until you try, right? So that's where I am right now. For our artists today, we have Q Grisby with us and also Native Wales. So another show you don't want to miss. Back in a moment. Coming up, we have Native Wales with us. Don't you go away. On an all new Michael Finkley, they are running for your local and state offices. Are you voting? Tamara Johnson Sheely and Brandon Trollinger. Tell their platforms and more, Monday Spinkley. School districts, organizations, nonprofits, are you in search of a new promotional products company? Seeger's Promotional Products is a black owned national company with over 780,000 products to choose from. Compared to other promotional products companies, they have the lowest prices in the industry. From pins, bags, shirts, they got you covered. They always remember that you are the customer and you come first. They always promise fast production and also fast delivery. With Seeger's Promotional Products Company, you truly have the best. Check out their website at SeegersPromotions.com and also on Facebook and LinkedIn. And tell them Finkley sent you. Welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. Now, my next guest, he is an award-winning artist. He is an entertainer. He is an entrepreneur. He is a film producer, director, writer. Y'all, the list goes on and on and on. He is Native Wells. Native, thank you for being with us today. Hey, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. We got to know why I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> it three times to do that. <laughs> I love it, though. I love it. We appreciate you for being on and just chatting with us for these few moments. We appreciate you, sir. Oh, man, I really appreciate you guys having me. I'm excited. Definitely. definitely. So let's go all the way back to Syracuse, right? Eight years old, a mother's love, something that you were you were craving at the time. You lost your mother due to cancer um, at that yeah. time in your life. Uh, how was that? as an eight-year-old and then transitioning into a, into a preteen and even an adult, how does that affect you? Well, you know, it affects you in many ways. Um, you know, a lot of men, you, you know, you hear about that motherly love and things like that. You know, I really didn't have that growing up. Um, I, I really had tough love for my dad. It's, uh, you know what I mean? And, you know, growing up with five of us, you know, five of those boys, I'm being the youngest. It was it was kind of tough. You know what I mean? You know, growing up in a different environment. Um, fire was violence, drugs, uh, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's just a little different. It's a little different than, you know, you know, it, it, it's the same kind of story, just like everybody else. Um, you know, but you try to, you know, you, you when you when you're that young, when you lose your mother that young, you really don't know what's what's going on. You know what I mean? And um and that's when that's when everything you know that's when everything started to you know to unravel a little bit you know what I mean definitely definitely and we see we see that each of us has our story their their own special way right but it makes us who we are as as individuals in life present day 
And so even on social media, right, a lot of I had this conversation with someone the other day, how we post the positive stuff, but we don't want to post the negative stuff in our life. But the negative stuff makes us who we are as well. So talk right. about the different sacrifices that you had to make to get to where you are today, because sometimes we miss we look at the, the end, the glorious end, but we don't look at the beginning or the middle. Right, right. It's, um, you know, it, it's all my life. I grew up, I grew up, I grew up playing ball. You know what I mean? You know, I, I, I went, I wanted to be in the NFL. I wanted to be a ball player. And, um, and I knew what I wanted, even though, you know, even though a lot of things were, you know, were kind of messed up around me growing up a little bit. You know what I mean? I did have, uh, you know, I did have a dad, um, you know, my dad, he, he took care of me. He took care of us. And, uh, and, you know, he did, he did whatever he had to do to, you know, to, to make sure that we had a roof over our head, uh, you know, food in our, food in our bellies and things like that. And, you know, and as you grow up, you started to, you started to become a little distant, you know, me and my dad, we started to, um, you know, bump heads a lot, um, you know, two stubborn men. So it's, um, you know, but it's a lot of sacrifice, man, that, you know, and this is what a lot of people don't understand. In order to get to where you want to get, you're going to have to sacrifice. Um, and in that case, it was us being homeless. You know what I mean? You know, losing, you know, losing our, you know, losing our job, losing our home, you know, taking showers on the beach, sleeping on the beach. It was, you know, that was the roughest time of my life. And I was. And just it, that time was it, it really what made me as a man. It really made me grow. And to say and to have my family with me and to, you know, and having my wife by my side, being strong, it was it was tough because, you know, you got your kids looking at you and you even got your wife looking at you like, you know, like, damn, like, what is like, what's going on, man? Where did I mess up at? And, um, you know, because we, we wasn't always in, in that kind of a situation. We, you know, we had a we had a we was living a great life, um, cars, big house and things like that. But it, it always that sacrifice is what made me um, the person that it made me go stronger. It made me go harder. It made me grind harder. It made me understand like, you know, nothing is given, you know, nothing is, don't never take nothing for granted. You know what I mean? And, and that's what I realized. And I promised my wife that, you know, once we get out of this situation, things is going to be better. And, um, you know, all that friends, all that friend stuff and, oh, man, you my boy, you my, no, no, because nobody, nobody helped me when we was down. When we was down and out, I had no help. Um, you know, living in Florida, we had no family. We got no family. Just me, just me, my wife, my three kids. You know what I mean? And, um, and that's, that right there was the, when I was like, okay, you know what? It's just us. So let's just take everybody else out of the picture. It's just us. Let's do what we got to do. And, um, you know, and that would make me strong. You know what I mean? I felt I, I didn't feel like a failure, even though when I was homeless, when we was homeless, you know, we moved back to New York to uh, we went to Syracuse, New York. Uh, we was going to go back to Brooklyn. And I was like, you know what? No, this is, let's go to Syracuse. Yeah, you know, all my family is there. Just, you know, I get some help, things like that. And, um, you know, and, and, they, and they helped out, um, you know, you know, even though me and my dad was going through what we was going through, you know, my stepmom, um, you know, they helped us out. You know what I mean? They helped us out. You know, they got us, a, they got us, they got us a house, you know, things like that. But I just couldn't maneuver the way that I was maneuvering when I was in, when I was in Florida. And I missed that. You know what I mean? Moved back home. I got into a couple of fights. I got into, it was just, it just, you know, a lot of violence, a lot of, a lot of killing. And um, I just couldn't raise my kids in that environment. You know what I mean? I, you know, and I was kind of miserable. I was miserable. And um, even, even though when I, even when I was doing music, I was miserable. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't beat that hump. I couldn't get over that hump. And, and I, and I knew what it was. I just wasn't happy. I wasn't happy back home. And, um, you know, that's when I told my wife, I said, listen, it's time to go back to Florida. I said, um, it's going to be different this time. You know what I mean? And, um, and, and that's, and for sure enough, I came back and I promised her, I said, yo, this is what we're going to do. Um, I said, if you work with me, I said, if you believe in me, um, just have faith in me. I said, you know, everything is going to be different. 
And, you know, and that's what happened. And how was it different? It, man, um, I wasn't running the streets as much as, as I used to. Um, there was a lot of things I wasn't, you know, I was, you know, I, I was working. I had, you know, I had a nine to five. I had, um, the music was going good. I wrote, you know, I wrote, I wrote, uh, no, no, the, the Netflix series Red Tide. We was getting that on the, off the ground. I met Paula. I met Paula Ann. And when, when I met Paula, everything started, everything started going from there. It was, uh, you know what I mean? I, I just started working harder. I'm not saying that I wasn't working hard. But because you can work hard and not go nowhere because you're missing something, um, you know, you're not moving right. You know, what I mean, that doesn't mean that you're, that you're not you're not working hard or doing what you're supposed to do. But I started working smarter. You know what I mean? That was and that was the difference. I, I, I calmed down. I stopped rushing and stopped like doing going too fast. And I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and calm down. Let's figure out what I got to do to make this happen. So I started knocking out each obstacle one at a time. And, and you know, and, and it worked. Um, it worked. And, um, you know, and having, and having somebody like Paula in my corner really helped, um, you know, because I always did everything by myself. I did my tour, you know, the Florida tour I did by myself, you know, the Pirate tour I did by myself, you know, my own money, my sweat, everything. And, um, you know, I really never had no help. And um, when I met Paula, she was she was really genuine. You know what I mean? It wasn't about the money for her. It was more about it was more about just helping someone that's that she sees has the potential and that she sees that's really trying. And um, and, you know, and we just took it from there. And, uh, you know, she trusts me. I trust her. She, you know, she's like my big sister. And, uh, you know, she she you know, she shows me the game. She teaches me. I can call Paula anytime, three in the morning, four in the morning. Uh, one time I called her at five in the morning. I said, hey, I got this idea and it's killing me, man. I can't sleep. Uh, I told her about it and she was like, you know what, neighbor, let's do it. And 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 that was that. And and that and that and that what changed the whole situation, the whole narrative is that I I sat down and I sat back and I started to look at the bigger picture and I started to see what I really need to do to make this work. You know, and, and put put my pride aside and and ask for a little help. I say, hey man, I need you know if you can help me, that'd be great. You know, things like that. So that was that was the whole that would change the whole narrative. I love it. I love it because as I was listening to your story, I'm like, oh my gosh, he was in the process of finding himself. He is right. finding, continuously present day finding himself. Right? You did away with those things that that got it in your skin, what that was negative in your life, and you started anew. And that's what we all do in life. We find it in our own ways. We find it in our own timing, but you found it. And you're right. running now, which is amazing. Look at you now. Look at you right. now. It's working. <laughs> so you, you mentioned your music. How would you describe your music? Man, um, you know, I like to I like to describe it as good music. Um, you know, you know, we, we I come I come from we come from the projects, the hood, the poverty. Um, we come from the streets, you know. But I still, my music is more, um, you know, not gangster music or nothing like that, but real. Um, you know, about it's really about my life. You know what I mean? Um, the struggles that I've been through, the struggles that you know what I mean that you know that people go through today. Um, you know, some people call me a lyricist. You know, some people compare me to, you know, like Cool G Rap. I get a lot of, uh, you know, the late, you know, the late great B Smalls. Um, not that, not that I sound like these guys, but my flow pattern and and the kind of music. Cause I, I love, I love R and B music. I love it. Um, I can't sing a lick though. You know what I mean? But I put a lot of R and B music into my music, as far as um, you know, R and B hooks and things like that. So, <coughs> excuse me, but that's what's and and I think that's how I describe my music. Um, it's it's uh, how could you put it? Uh, con they they say conscious conscious rap. But I don't think it's conscious rap. I just it's more of it's just more of highlighting highlighting my life. You know what I mean? I like that. It tells a story about you, right? It tells a story. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And in in those kind of songs. Native, it makes it more relatable. Right. 
the authentic, the authentic side, the genuine side of it, the realist of you. And we can relate to that. Right. Absolutely. You, know, you may be going through something and I may be going through the same thing. Right. And it's like someone else gets it. Someone else gets it. So I love that type of music. I, I really, really do. Because, again, it's just all related in that. Right. Uh, what are you working on now? Right now, we do. Uh... Right now, I'm working on you know you know I'm working on we're working on a project, um you, you know me and one of my artists, um you know his name Joe. So um, you know it's more of a completed music. Um, he 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 is an R&B. He's like an R&B pop rock kind of guy, <clears throat> and we're working on a project right now as we speak. And um, you know so we got that going on. Uh, we in pre-production <clears throat> for the uh, for the for the Red Tie series. Um, you know we start shooting October 10th. And, uh, you know, so that should be big. It's, um, you know, so everything just started to, you know, the, all the stars are starting to line up, you know, you know, in place. I think I did my time. I struggled. I've, uh, I put my family through a lot. Um, you know, I, I put my wife through a lot and, um, you know, my, my wife is my world, man. So she's, she's my rock. She's all, she's always by my side. She always, you know, she always support me. A hundred percent. Even when even when I got to go on tour or when I'm doing a video or anything like that. If you see my videos, my wife is in mostly my videos. So. <coughs> oh, my God. Excuse me. But and and I put my wife in my videos because, you know, I don't need for one. She don't play that video vixen thing anyway. But <laughs> but but uh, she's uh you know, what I mean, but she's beautiful anyway. You know, what I mean, she's beautiful. So I don't I don't need a vixen, but she's. I put her in my videos because I make it, let, it lets people know that my videos are with, are real. And, um, you know, so when they see my wife, they like, man, OK, this is like he's a real dude. He's you know, you know what I mean? I put my kids in my videos, things like that. So it's, um you know, but other than that, yeah, we're working on a Red Tide series, man, is written, directed and it, uh, written directed by myself and, um, you know, co-directed by Mike, um, you know, by my guy, Michael. And, um, you know, so he's like we right now, it, this is the very fun time for us it's um you know it's everything is just following it's just falling in line you know it's just falling in line because it's time it is it's time it's It's time time. yes sir and we believe in that right um his timing is always perfect so right walk into it exactly exactly (laughs) <laughs> how Say it again. How can they follow you on social media? Uh, they can follow me. I'm on Instagram at official native wells. That's native wells with a Z. Um, I'm on, you know, I'm at TikTok at, as native wells. I'm on, you know, um, you know, Facebook, um, my fan page, it's native wells. So, um, tw- you know, you can follow me on Twitter at native wells. So everything is native wells. W W E L L Z. You know, a lot of people think it's an S, but it's a Z. But um, you know, so a lot of people can find me on there. Um, you know, right now, man, it's it's, it's just a fun time for us. You know, I'm re- I'm ready to shoot. I can't wait. I can't. This this series right here is going to be a fun series. It's, you know, starring Rick Parks, a good friend of mine uh, who we played played on the same football team. Um, you know, you know, great actor. Um, very, you know, physically fit. It's going because in a series, you know, it's going to be a lot of running. So, but um, it's it's going to be a great series. I can't really talk about it too much, but it's going to be a great series. Well, hurry up! We're way we're dying to see it, sir. <laughs> Have it completed for viewership. Well, right now we're shooting because uh, right now we're going to be shooting the pilot. We six episodes in. Um, we're going to be shooting the pilot, and again, we're going to be shopping the pilot around. Um, we got, you know, we, we we got a lot of um, uh, like um, you know, vertical pictures. Um, you know, Paula Ann's also shopping it around. So we, you know, so we got a few. So we got a few people that's interested. They're just waiting on the pilot. So that's that's why this pilot got to be, you know, it got to be super official, mm-hmm. and uh, and it got to be done. It got to be done in the, you know the right way. Because if it ain't done right, then I'm not gonna do it. If it's not official, I'm not gonna do it. Exactly. So, um, you know, you know, so uh, we got a lot of great guys in it. It's it's go, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. All right, y'all heard it here, ladies. You need some extras, you know. My safety laws on the TV. But, you know, let me know what I can do. Thank you so much, Nada, for being with us and telling us your story in your own words. We appreciate you. Thank, thank you. Thanks for having me.
You're very welcome. Back in a moment. Next, Q Grizzly chats with us. Don't go away. She is a flexible and she is a multitasker. She is a wife, a mom, she is city councilwoman. She, yeah. When I was growing up, mom worked outside the house, and so my dad was an entrepreneur. I saw him leaving early in the morning or late at nights to go meet with clients, and he was always one who told me, you know, if you show up on time, you're late. I just admire how she's able to not only juggle the demands of her jobs, but keep her family really first. The outstanding thing about the Isaac family is their noble contributions to improving the quality of life for our Colombians and people all over this state. Aye. Aye. Tamika Isaac. To Solomon Square. Discharge the duties thereof. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations and thank you. I first ran because I saw a need. I saw a void that needed to be filled, a voice uh, that wasn't there. And over the last several years, I feel like I've been able to be that voice. So often as women in whatever spaces that we're in, um, we are often discounted because we're a mom or we're a wife or we have this career. And she's an everyday woman who shows women what excellence looks like. She has walked the walk of being a small business person, of being a parent, of sending her kids to school. Columbia is a great place, and we have done a lot in the last few years as far as law enforcement. But law enforcement can't do everything, nor should it do everything. We have to really expand upon the tools, technology, and community policing, investing in our communities uh, so that law enforcement is a partner with our communities. Being a Columbia native, I've seen the way this city has grown. It's grown to the point that sometimes not everybody's been a part of that growth. I want to make sure that communities, specifically communities of color, make sure that they are part of Columbia's present and its future. I want to have a climate plan for this city that not only helps us be sustainable, but also helps provide opportunities for folks in the workforce. There are so many opportunities to take advantage of technology, uh, green energy. I want to be the advocate for growing our city and being on the forefront, not just looking at what other cities are doing and following them, but being the leader. If you don't have the right leadership, you're going to miss a lot of opportunities. I think having a woman as mayor of the city of Columbia is long overdue. I'm Tamika Isaac Devine, and I'm running for mayor of the city of Columbia. Everybody, welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. Now, my next guest, he is an entertainer. He's a dancer. Oh, my gosh, you got so many titles. We're going to talk about them all, I promise you. Y'all, he is Q Grisby. Q, thank you for being with us today. Hey, thank you for having me, Michael. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you for saying yes by our friend and dear friend, Paula, introducing <laughs> us. I appreciate you so much, sir. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Michael. Oh, you're welcome. So let's dive into it. Entertainment is you and you are entertainment. Is entertainment a part of your bloodline? Yeah. <laughs> That's my, this is my pops looking over my shoulder right now. I love it. Yeah. And that's his baby. How did that come about? Ooh, entertainment in general? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so... Music has always played around the house. Uh, my, my father's a bass player. Uh, my mother's a, an opera scholar. And so naturally music was always around. Um, they tended to listen to um, some of what their parents listened to, which is why I even have an old soul. So like the Sam Cooke, James Brown, um, Jackie Wilson, um, Motown in general, we can go there. But no one knew that I could 
sing. It was singing that came up first. I was always boogieing and dancing and, and wiggling and, and doing something. I was the, the little kid at the at the weddings, at the parties, you know, the first little boy on the dance floor. But um, no one knew I could sing until one day I was vacuuming and Whitney Houston's Saving All My Love For You was on. And I was seven years old and going in. Michael, let me tell you, let me lean in for this. When I say I was going in, I was going in so hard. I remember that because it was the part where it was, and tonight is the night. And and I just remember feeling it. <laughs> and I'm feeling all right. And that's when, yay, my auntie comes and pulls the cord out of the wall. <laughs> I was like, she's, she, I, I was shocked. Because I was like, what happened? What happened? And she said, Come in here, come in here. She, she calls me and she had this really stern look on her face. She's from Nicaragua. So the, maybe the cultural difference, like maybe, she, I don't know, maybe she was, whatever it was, I interpreted like she was angry. <clears throat> she calls me into the room, calls me in front of all the elders. Says, do that again, do that again. And I didn't know what she wanted me to do. I didn't know if I was vacuuming wrong, if I had hit the furniture. Like I was just thinking all the things I could have done wrong, That's you know. It. Bro, let me tell you, because if I got in trouble with her, it was the wooden spoon. And she already broke it on my brother. <laughs> he got it so good, the spoon broke. So I already knew. I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> whatever I did, I was like, I was holding. I was like, hold on. I, was like, I don't want to do whatever I did again if it, you know, if it was, you know, got me in trouble. So I sang um, the, a portion of the song and they began eye watering and tearing I start crying and somebody says we need to get him in choir I said I don't want to sing if it's going to make people do that I don't I don't want to do that. that was the way I you know I processed it I was like no nah, people are going to be and I'm, I don't want to sing but I joined the choir mm -hmm. and um and then things rolled from there before you know what I was doing um I was in a professional production uh Raisin in the Sun um by the time I was 11 um and paid that was my first like legit paid job I was like I got a check <laughs> at 11 years old yeah so it was something that I was doing on the side and for fun and my mother would take me to rehearsals and mm -hmm. I would do little things like that it wasn't until the end of junior high where I saw all my friends were going to different high schools mm -hmm. um, some were going to the one that was close by others were going to um, one that was math and science um, oriented and I said, okay, well, if everybody's doing their own thing, this is that scary time where I've got to make a choice. And so I started doing some homework and I found, this is in the Bay Area. So in San Jose, Lincoln, Cal uh, Lincoln High School was a performing arts-based high school. And that meant that only me and maybe six other people from my junior high were going there. So that's how my life took its course. And I began to focus on the arts and diversify my, my crafts. I love it. I love it. And and look at you to this day. You know, you have mastered your craft present day thus far, but there's always that that next thing that we're looking for. So kudos to you in that. Uh, when, it, when it comes down to the world of entertainment, though, it can be very, very tricky, right? I know that you probably experienced this even present day. So how do you define your own personal success? Ooh, I define my own personal personal success by how busy I am mm. um, because it it's you're your own train and you yeah. carry your own set of experiences and you have your own route so you can't be looking over what the next person is doing on their track mm. um, if that makes sense <laughs> so yes I just I try to keep moving um, even if I'm, you notice, you know, when you come to track, sometimes the train is just going this way. Sometimes it's, it's flying. Yep. I don't base it on speed anymore. I think that's what maturity mm -hmm. is, has taught me. It's not about speed, but mm -hmm. really about the ground that I cover. And a lot of times, um, we can get caught up in the dollar bill, but I define my own personal success by my bucket list the things that I set out to do and the things that I've accomplished and the things that I'm looking forward to doing. And of course, feeling um, a sense of joy when I do it mm -hmm. and fulfillment. And I don't mean that in a Hallmark, you know, car kind of way, but 
when I'm on my way to a show or to the stage or I'm getting dressed, I don't feel like, oh, here I go again. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to being with my cast. I'm looking forward to surprising myself <laughs> with live entertainment. You never know how it's going to turn out. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I look forward to surprising myself. And those that tell me that they live vicariously through me, that lets me know that, oh, OK, I'm somewhere where others are in admiration of me. So therefore, I must be succeeding at what I'm seeking to do exactly success exactly, exactly. And, and again I say you you are definitely on your way in that right because greater is still among you I was watching one of your videos and you you said that you never know what's going to happen live and you were just dancing your heart out you were dancing your heart out and your and your fro came <laughs> I was coming off you were like bup, bup, da, bup, 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 bup. you just kept going Bro, <laughs> so I love bloopers. I do. Uh-huh. I really do. You don't plan for them. And that particular one that um, for the audience that, that are watching, um, um, I'm in a Michael Jackson show, which I'm sure we'll get to. And I'm wearing an Afro wig. And um, it was shake your body down to the ground. So, of course, I got to go off. And. I went so hard. This particular day, ugh, I had the wrong stocking cap on and I didn't fix it. To, and I could feel it wobbling a little. And the moment I tossed my head back and I felt the wig slide, I thought, that's it. I am done. If it hits the floor, rolls down into like, the, I, I don't know how I'm going to play that off. But I caught it. And on the horns, I said, you made it work. You really make it work. Yeah. Bro, at that point, the audience sees it. I know the audience sees it. Mm-hmm. So I, you can see my eyes flare up like, I know y'all saw that. So let's just not act like we didn't see it. Let's just laugh. Yes, I'm going to laugh. We're going to laugh. And I'm going to clean this up. We're going to keep going. All right. <laughs> that you did, sir. <laughs> In the video, you should see the guy the watch it. Go look at the guy in the background. There's a brother. He's like, mm. <laughs> he holds that look. <laughs> oh, I, love it, I love it all. And in your career thus far, you worked a lot of greats. One of those greats, including Shaka Khan. Tell us your Shaka Khan story. Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. I love Shaka Khan. Yes. How did that come about? Oh, how did that come about? Yeah. I was teaching some dance classes up north in Sacramento. I got a call from a friend in between my class. She was blowing my phone up. She says, hey, there's an audition tomorrow morning. This is a Thursday night she was hitting me up. There's an audition tomorrow morning. And I know it's last minute. And I'm thinking about going out there um, to L.A. It's for Shaka Khan. And let me just say, with the musicians in my life, playing Shaka Khan, Rufus and Shaka Khan. And I don't mean just, I feel for you. I mean, all the, all the hits. Mm -hmm. It just felt like it was my calling. I never felt like that before. Um, But it just seemed right. I said, hold on a minute. I wouldn't normally just up and leave. I left the studio. I packed. We were on the road at 3 a.m. We drove down to L.A., We got there early. I grabbed a five-hour energy drink, which I do not promote. And I I think they're just, oh, man, they're they're horrible. But I needed it. I needed a liquid crack. Um, I drank that, went into this dance studio. I felt like Superman. I went into the dress, to the bathroom in, like, sweats and, you know, your um, road trip clothes. Came out chains, a wrap around my head. I had all my vest and chiseled, like oil down and walked into the, to the audition. It was only for those who were signed with an agency. I was not. Wow. And I just put down the agency that my friend was in and I crossed my fingers. Now I know (laughs) in this industry, you do things that are against the grain and you take lots of chances. For me, this was an opportunity to practice auditioning. 
I wasn't even necessarily trying to book it. I wanted to practice auditioning and work on my game. I had just auditioned for Rihanna um, maybe a month prior, and there's like 900 people there. And I learned a lot from watching all those people go through the whole process. I learned that there's a lot of wolves in this industry when the choreographer tells you, okay, can you just move like this on the, on the freestyle? And I see a girl lift her leg above her head, crack it over and then drop it and then spin three times. I'm like, that's not what the choreographer asked for. She booked the job. So I said, I've got to, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be a sneaky person, but I have to have some tricks up my sleeve in order to make it through this, this, you know, these lanes. So Mm -hmm. We learned the choreo. I went into a back room and I practiced a few things um, to weave into my freestyle. And it was, uh, it was, I feel for you. So shaka khan, shaka khan, shaka khan, shaka khan. So on the dinner, 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 I told myself, what would amaze me? Or I asked myself, what would amaze me if I could hit a pose, hit the splits, pop up and then shoot through the rest of the choreo, Mm -hmm. but flawlessly. Cause you can maybe hit the splits, come back and then stumble. So I said, Oh shoot, I've got to do this flawlessly. So I practiced it and I saved it for my next round. And when I hit it, dinner splits, pop up, boom, dun, 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 dun. went through the choreo. The whole room was like, what? So that was my little breaking moment in the audition. Um, until I started to gas out that five hour energy drink started to gas out. Oh man. One of the other dancers did something. And I have to mention this. He did something that I've never seen an LA dancer do or experience. Um, he pretty much had the job when he came in there because the choreographer was like, Hey buddy. Oh, good to see you. I said, Oh, he has a job. He came over to me. Um, when the choreographer had paired us both together to dance next to each other. And he said, Hey man, Let's book this together. Let's not dance against each other. Let's book this together. And this huge went over my head. And at first I thought, is he up to something? (laughs) But his his eyes were very earnest. His name is G Madison. He's very well known in in the the dance dance world um, in his own right. And I looked at him, I said, okay. So when we went side by side, I felt his energy. I matched his energy and we booked it together. Long story long. We booked it together. Um, They were only booking three guys. (laughs) And it was myself, him and and another gentleman. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that experience, uh, let alone was hands down one of the most epic. It was the first time I got to perform on TV, on BET. Uh, That was one of my dreams to be able to say, you know, have my friends be like, hey, that's my friend on TV. So that was a a big pivotal moment for me. That is amazing. That is amazing. I'm glad you brought that up too. That was one of your dreams. What is your next biggest dream that you're working towards now? My next biggest dream would be to release an EP with my own music. Mm -hmm. Um, Following that, maybe not in any consecutive order on the timeline, but my one of my big checkoffs on my bucket list is to be on Broadway. I I am a thespian as well, so I love musicals. Um, I love being and performing in musicals because I get to sing and dance and act and be a goofball or you know be this intense role. So Broadway is is up there. I love it. I love it, and it's yours just for the asking. And so in doing some research about UQ, I found this academy that you were, you've been a part of, you're a part of now, um, Groove Academy. Tell us about it. Yeah. So Groove Academy is a production company that specializes in um, putting together um, themed functions, dances, shows um, globally. They found me through my dad. My dad, um, he's he's a bass player and he has connections and things. And so one of his musician friends was in town looking for a singer that dances that could possibly rap. And like any proud father would do or say, hey, my son, he, he sings and dances. And of course, the dude is like, 
Yeah. Okay. You know. <laughs> He's like, no, no, man. And my dad, (laughs) like a dad, a proud dad would, he starts name dropping. Oh, no, he's done this. He's been, he's performed with Mario and he's did this. He's in this Michael Jackson thing. And he, man, he performed with Shaka Khan. He's, yes, you know, Shaka Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. So he's doing all that. And I receive a call at seven in the morning. I'm not a morning person. Um, he, He calls me at seven in the morning. And he tells me the dialogue. That's why I knew exactly how he said it. He tells me the dialogue of how it went down. He pairs me up with this guy. I sent them a video audition. They said they would get back to me within the next two days. They called me in 15 minutes and said, we want to fly you out to Canada. Um, We are Groove Academy. This is what we do. We're looking for someone with your caliber of talent. I was living in LA at the time. And I just finished my my streak with Shaka and I was working with Universal Studios as a scare actor, completely different from what I do. So, I mean, zombies, prosthetics, walking dead, we'll come back to that later. So I was doing that and um, they flew me out to Canada. Mm -hmm. I met the team. They explained how they do things and how they encourage me to do my own thing outside of them and grow with them as well, which was exciting for me. I said, well, what is it that I have to do? And they laid it out. I had backup dancers, full band. We had aerialists. Uh, We were doing full productions. It was a whole winter season. And I was the American talent, which I didn't realize a lot of people outside of our country really, really, I mean, the way they look up to us and our talent, especially, (laughs) I was very, I. I was blown away. So they received me and they took a look at my wardrobe and said, you have a really punky and funky. um, Yeah. Like variety here. Just look, we'll give you the colors. You do what you do when you're on stage. Here's the choreo, but you can do whatever you want. It was the freedom and the liberties that they gave me on stage that made me feel most, most, the, the closest to my my ultimate my optimal self D- does that make sense here's the music but do what you want with it here's the dancers around you but just be center at this point everything else you can do whatever you want to oh man that's huge <laughs> bro that's huge Screen, the big led screens behind me the pyro i i felt like <laughs> I, I can do this. <clears throat> so um, I went on to do that. I was at a, at a crossroad between hanging on to this Bollywood um, gig that I got or sticking with Groove Academy because there was an overlap of dates. And a best friend of mine said, go with whichever one makes your heart throb. And I immediately said, Groove Academy. I had to let go of Bollywood. I disappointed some people. And I went forward with that and bam, before you know it, I went from Canada to Berlin, Germany, to Mexico. And then finally I was living um, most recently in Beijing, China for the last four years leading up to 2020. Yeah. Talk about living in your dream. Wow. That is amazing, Q. Wow. And with all of that, oh my gosh, that's, that's amazing. And with all of that still, what are you working on now? Um, they would like me back in China. Uh, I'm kind of a, I'm a I'm kind of a rock star there, so I'm their I'm their little I'm the yeah, <laughs> and they take care of their talent. They really really take care of their talent. <clears throat> so I'm working on going back there, um, but in the meantime, I'm in my very first Vegas show. I've I, Michael, I did not think I would ever be performing. I just didn't, I just didn't imagine that I would be performing on, in Vegas on the strip. And, um, that show opened up in May and I'm really excited about that as well. Wow. Amazing. And you're, and again, you're staying busy. Look at that. Busy. You're yeah. staying busy. What would you tell inspiring persons that want to, be where you are or do what you do. Maybe watch this and saying, I want to, I want to follow in his footsteps. What would you say to them? 
I would start with this. I would start with this formula that a friend gave me several years ago before things just clicked and I went into overdrive with my focus and my routine and my regimens. We were sitting down in my apartment and it was a few of us artists. We was after a rehearsal or show. And he said, you know, there's a formula to success. And I thought he was going to say something, I don't know, something cheesy that I heard before. Mm -hmm. And maybe many of your listeners have heard it before, but for me, it clicked. I'm going to lean in for this too. He said, preparation plus opportunity equals success. Mm. I took that in and at first I got it at the superficial level, like, oh yeah, of course, right? But -hmm. then he said it again, preparation Mm -hmm. meets opportunity equals success. You can't be successful if the opportunity comes and you're not prepared. I started just how I do in math. I started moving the variables around and I said, wait, if an opportunity comes tomorrow, am I prepared? I started asking myself questions. You know how the mind goes. I said, am I prepared? If I'm not prepared, what do I need to do to prepare? This is where someone else would say, well, tomorrow I'm going to know. After everyone left the house, I started doing vocal exercises. I started listening to some of the greats and practicing my voice, um, my breath control. Um, Started looking, oh shoot, how updated is my resume? Do I need to put together a reel? Oh, in order to put together a reel, I need to contact this person. Oh, if I'm going to record this, then I need to have somebody mix my music. I have a lot to do. <laughs> That's it was it was like I said, oh shoot, I have a lot to do in order to be prepared if an opportunity comes. Case in point, Groove Academy calling me up. Hey, can you send this? Can you send that? Bam, I don't have any excuses of, well, I am, um, and uh, uh, let me just, uh, uh, because they'll move on to the, you know how we get. <laughs> so that formula right there led me to my sleeplessness. 3 a.m. nights of my poor neighbors at the time, I lived in a one bedroom apartment and I was going in, I'd be working on my belting, I'd be working on all my different registers, I'd be, um, working on a song or a dance, or at the time I was teaching, I was just working, 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 working. My mind just never stopped. So wherever you can see improvement, if you, if you're singing a song into um, a voice recorder and you don't like the way your voice sounds, work on it until you like the way your voice sounds. If you don't like the way you look on camera, when you dance or move, do something, adjust it, fix it, work on this. Oh, my stomach hangs over my belt. Well, then drop and do some abs. Literally, I I was always planning for the next thing. What is it that I don't like about myself? Fix it instead of complaining about it or talking or beating myself or self-mutilating myself about how I'm not there. Well, then get there. There. Time to get to work. I know that was a mouthful, but that that was the process. Definitely. That's good. That's definitely good. How can they find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on my stamp. I'm on Instagram at K-I-E-U-008. Um, I'm also on Facebook under Rashad, R-A-S-H-A-D, middle name Q. You can look up K-I-E-U, last name Grisby. I'm also um, affiliated with a nonprofit, SOSforlife.org. So you can find me and my works. I'm a creative director for that organization as well. Again, that's SOSforlife.org. We also have our Instagram, SOS, the number four life. All right. You heard it here and all your information is in the description below. SOS, so along with Presley Tennant, correct? Yes, Presley. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I heard she was with you recently as well. Very yeah, talented. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much, Q, for being with us and telling us who you are as an individual. We appreciate you. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? That's a California thing. <laughs> oh, wow. You said it, y'all. Back in a moment. <laughs> Keeping your skin flawless and clean is important. 
and I have the products just for you. Welcome to Mimi's Natural Pantry, where she specializes in homemade handcrafts, including rye and goat milk soaps, body butters, and sugar scrubs. All items are handmade products. All items have simple ingredients and are vegan friendly. In a world where you can barely pronounce many of the ingredients in your everyday products, Mimi's Back to Nature offers an alternative choice for those who are ready to get back into nature. Ready to order? Visit their website at mimisnaturalpantry.com. All orders over $50 have free shipping up to 25 pounds. Hey everyone, here's another Inspire Me moment in 60 seconds. Today's thought is, humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up. Now this is a good word right here and I want to look at it as a life application. The lesson here is, sometimes you need to, as the old folks would say, sit down somewhere and let others lift you up. You don't have to go around bragging and boasting on everything that you do. Let the work you've done speak for you and others will see and speak of your good deeds. Hey, that's all I got for today. Remember to do all of the things on social media. Share this message. Now go out and make today absolutely amazing. As always, thank you for doing all the social media things, such as like, comment, follow, subscribe, and share this message on all your media platforms. Even more, hit the bell notification so you never miss a video or an upload. This is your boy, Kenny Lewis, and guess what? I'm here with my boy, Michael Finkley, on Roku TV and YouTube. School districts, organizations, nonprofits, are you in search of a new promotional products company? Seeger's Promotional Products is a black owned national company with over 780,000 products to choose from. Compared to other promotional products companies, they have the lowest prices in the industry. From pins, bags, shirts, they got you covered. They always remember that you are the customer and you come first. They always promise fast production and also fast delivery. With Seeger's Promotional Products Company, you truly have the best. Check out their website at SeegersPromotions.com and also on Facebook and LinkedIn. And tell them Finkler sent you. On an all new Michael Finkley, they are running for your local and state offices. Are you voting? Tamara Johnson Sheely and Brandon Trollinger. Tell their platforms and more Monday's Finkley. Welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. I hope that you learned something from our guest today. Thank you so much, Q. Thank you so much, Nada, for being with us today and telling us your story in your own words. We really appreciate you. If you're not already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Michael Finkley Show. Ring that bell for notification. We'll see you in the email saying, hey, new content uploaded. Please listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And visit our website for more information about what we do here on the Michael Finkley Show at themichaelfinkleyshow.com. Roku TV, I know you got it. Add the Greater Works Network to your Roku TV and watch the Michael Finkley Show every Monday and Friday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or on demand. Thank you so much for watching, and guess what? We'll see you next time. Have a good one. <laughs>